think Hollywood exerts this, it sends this message. If you show up, I'm going to deliver your destiny, but you gotta stay, you have to believe in me. And Hollywood is not gonna disabuse you of that notion. It needs you here. Hi, for Reason TV, I am Tim Cavanaugh. We're here with Nancy Rommelman, an award-winning journalist, author of the new novel, The Bad Mother, a story of street kids in Hollywood. Tell us a little about the book, just, you know, general plot and characters and so forth. Sure. Uh, it's about a pretty small group of street kids, all between the ages of about 12 and 19. There is a, an empty loft that is above the Playmates on Hollywood and Wilcox, which is, in fact, Playmates is still there. And they squat in this loft. Mostly three girls um, stay there, but of course there's just tons of kids in and out. Um, the lead character is pregnant, she's 14, she has her baby. And basically everything that happens on these four corners to these kids in about a six month period of time. And it's in a real minimalist style. I mean, it's, it's journalistic and there is not a lot of, you know, telling you how to feel about the, there are situations that are horrible enough. I mean, certainly if you, if you like uh, uh, genital blistering, you're going to get it. You're going to get it. Get it right in, in the first book. chapter. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't ever, either in fiction or in journalism, want to tell the reader how to feel. I don't really think that's my job. I'm going to tell them what happens, and um, they can, you know, they they can take it and they can figure out how they feel about it. So yeah, I don't want to hound lead them anywhere. The kids in this book, we should uh, make clear, are these are the type. When we say street people, they're the kind of street people that uh, you know even poor people are saying we got to get away from these guys. This is like you know it, swollen, uh, you know, calf type of uh, street folks. Infected foot, you know, they're yeah. turning tricks. They're young, too. Uh, mm -hmm. The kids in this book are really between the ages of 12 and 19 is pushing it. They really are trying to survive. They're just trying to get through the day and help each other as they can, whether like, okay, so, you know, maybe I can um, buy you a sandwich or, you know, I can turn a trick so I can buy diapers for your baby. I feel very, very tenderly toward these kids, and I hope that comes through in the book. There are certainly instances in the book, people read it and they feel like, this is too much, it hurts too much to look at these kids. But I think you're right, um, people do see these kids on the boulevard because they are there and they're in probably every, you know, big city. They just see them as sort of faceless and as a problem. Um, and I, I didn't see them that way. They became very real to me, so. Now, this is not a reported work, contrary to uh, popular belief. It, contrary to what everybody keeps insisting, even when I tell them, no, it's a novel, you know, I, I wrote it, it's a work of imagination, people will still say, yes, but you're a journalist, so you must have done some, you know, some research, and you must have talked to some kids. And I say, well, I, I didn't, actually. I lived in Hollywood for 18 years. I drove Hollywood Boulevard almost every day during those 18 years, and just by osmosis and, and seeing this and being around it, um, their stories started to seep into me even though it is fiction. An interesting part of this is these are kids who, for the most part, are not actually uh, Hollywood natives. They most have come, so several of them come from other parts of California or other parts of the country, and not all of them from bad backgrounds. No, but they did become, you know, I think, like in the case of Roach, who's my lead male, he, his mother developed pretty severe mental illness, and yeah. uh, he and his brother were just lost to the system. Right. And how, you know, they, it's sort of like, you know, you drop it in at the top and they, they just funnel down. They, they wind up in Hollywood. The weather's pretty good here. Um, you know, maybe there's a chance that, you know, Hollywood promises a lot. You know, you can come here and have a destiny. Though a lot of these kids aren't, they're, they're not here to be superstars. Yeah. One yeah. thinks she might be. Right. Um, but yeah, they, they kind of wound up here. Do you think the reason that uh, people keep wanting to think of this as a reported work is that you really uh, refuse to give anybody, you know, the comforts of the bourgeois novel, and, uh, nor is there really like a, a big attempt to, to kind of sentimentalize the kids or, or work out their problems for them or anything like that. As my, as my publisher said, she said, nobody's going to read this book and want to be a homeless teenager in Hollywood. It's not romantic yeah, at all. Yeah. I think people want to continue to believe that it is reported because they know me as a journalist um, who you know, spends time with people for a long time sometimes in their lives to write a, a story 
like this, and maybe because these kids seem very real to them. That's what they tell me. So they, they can't believe that they weren't real. It's uh, a quick read, too. Uh, it's a very quick read. Hour and a half. Yeah, uh, 149 <laughs> pages, pages, right? Pages. So yeah, uh, the adaptation will be uh, be a <laughs> yeah, snap. That's yeah, right. we have seen. I report on it a lot. Uh, all of the money that gets spent by you know for redevelopment and so forth. We're looking at about 5.5 billion dollars have been dumped on Hollywood by our redevelopment agency. You know, which now will say, oh look, you know the W Hotel is up there. The actual experience of Hollywood is horrific. It is, you know, really a, a, a la moving laterally at best in terms of what's closed up and just what's not available and how many people, you know, people are hanging out on the street. Your book certainly does not suggest there's any kind of solution to this problem. No, I don't think there is a solution to this problem. It's just like, you know, human beings are human beings. They're going to fail. They're going to fail as parents. Uh, kids are going to make bad choices. You know, they're going to do too many drugs or they're going to make a wrong. I mean, it's, it's the, we're always going to have this. The city can't solve this. Um, but in terms of Hollywood and the money dumping into it, I have to tell you, we're staying at the Roosevelt Hotel. So I, uh, about 10 o'clock, I go out to grab some coffee, and they're wheeling this full-size Marilyn Monroe onto the street. Yeah. And I think, wow, we're still, she's still, we're still using her <laughs> to try it for the same thing. But obviously people want it because they keep coming back. I'm surprised every time I come back to L.A. how little has changed. It looks yeah exactly the same as when I left. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it's, it, 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 it's not getting any more beautiful. It doesn't seem like it's getting any more vibrant. It's just the same thing, the same thing. But I guess it's working. There's a lot of tourists on the street. You saw a lot of tourists today? Oh, yes, okay. yes. And then I think the most shocking thing I saw this morning, I was waiting for my coffee, and in the coffee shop was Spider-Man, you know, Spider-Man stands in front of Man's Chinese with the big muscles, it's the Spider-Man sure. suit. But he had his mask off, and it was about this 60-year-old guy who was so desiccated, he looked like a piece of old driftwood. And I'm looking at him and thinking, like, he's out there, you know, doing his muscles thing with the mask on, but with it off, it's just... But again, that's yeah. also, to me, what's so fascinating about Hollywood. Like, he's the guy I want to interview. Right. How did yeah, you yeah, get yeah. here, yeah. and why are you still here? People don't really appreciate what a punishing life it is. It is like you really got to have a lot of stick to and stamina and at some level be able to say, you know, I'm 60-year-old Spider-Man, and this is my dream. I'm living the dream. I think what it is, I think Hollywood exerts this, it sends this message, and it says, if you show up, I'm going to deliver your destiny, but you got to you got to stay. You have to believe in me. So they come, and a lot of people, you know, it doesn't happen and they leave. But other people just keep. They just stay and they just stay and they just stay. And maybe maybe that next break is going to happen. And Hollywood is not going to disabuse you of that notion. It needs you here. <laughs>